What's up everyone? Happy New Year. I hope you all had a very restful holiday. I sure did. So now that we've got a new year, we've also got a new bike. This right here is the Aventin Andreas. The Andreas is probably the first bike that directly competes with the Kilo TT Pro. So without further ado, let's get this Andreas unboxed to see if it can go toe to toe with the Kilo TT Pro. For the most fun that I've had on a bike, check out our channel sponsor Wabi Cycles linked at the top of the description. Now packaging is probably one of the most boring topics when it comes to bikes, but packaging is very important and this box is absolutely glued tight. And now I'm bleeding. This is a very secure. Packaging is a pretty small thing, but as a customer, when you're ordering something online, the packaging is the first thing that you interact with. And it feels good as a customer knowing that the company cares about the product and that you get the product in a good condition. Even if it's not the most expensive, high-performing bike in the entire world, it feels good knowing that the company cares that you get a good product. I promise I'm done about packaging, but... Venton, good job. Kino RD2s. So although these cranks aren't a proper 144 BCD track crank set, they are Sugino RD2s, which are one of the best, if not the best, 130 BCD crank sets. So it'll be exciting to see how this specific crank set stacks up against its bigger brother, the Sugino 75s. As far as the unboxing experience for everything else goes so far, it's a little mixed. First of all, this paint job, really nice. I was expecting the rear end though to be a little bit more more black, but it's actually kind of a bluish dark gray with sparkles no less, but there are some inconsistencies in the paint. It's mostly with these white bands that I'm seeing. They actually don't look like paint. It looks like there might be some bubbling underneath, which leads me to believe that they are decals. For the price though, can't really complain too much since you're getting a two and a half tone paint job. Just know that if you take a closer look, it's not going to be the finest craftsmanship in the world. But something that is a little bit disappointing for a Ventim, I had a really great unboxing and building experience with the 2018 Aventa Matero. Everything was very neatly packed, yada yada. But here on this Andreas, there's a small chip in the paint. The frame set and the rims are a little bit grimy. It's not a huge deal, it's just something that I didn't experience when I unboxed the Aventa Matero. Another thing that's a little bit disappointing is that there's pretty sizable chip in the dry side dropout. Again, it's not a huge deal though, since it'll be bolting the wheel. Other than that though, it's Seems like everything else is in pretty good order. I don't know if you hear that, but there's an ice cream truck going around in January. And after taking a closer look at these white bands, I'm really not sure whether they're paint or decals. Regardless of what it is though, it doesn't exactly meet at the seam very perfectly. And you can also see the boundary between the red and the dark gray paint through these white bands. It does look really slick though, and the ones on the fork are dang near perfect. Look at that, they have a dab of blue Loctite already on the stem bolts. While something as small as blue Loctite isn't a huge deal in itself, but all these small details that Aventon pays attention to, they add up and they make Aventon feel a little more special. I don't care who you are, this is a hot set of handlebars. And it's pretty nice that these aren't actually track drops because gosh, track drops really suck on the street. Oh yeah, that's what I like to see. Cog and lock ring, pre-greased, pre-tightened. It does need a little bit of cleaning up, but details, details. So that chipped dropout is actually more than just a chip. The dropout is actually squished a little bit and is too tight to fix the axle, so it will require some force. And now that I think about it, although this is just a bunch of speculation, it looks like this damage may have happened before the bike was shipped. I looked through the box, and if it was damaged during shipping, there would probably be some paint chips in there, but there aren't. Which leads me to believe that after the bike was painted, but before it was put in the box, something 
happened and it was damaged and not appropriately taken care of. I previously praised Aventon in my Matera unboxing because it seemed like they had really tight quality control and a lot of you agreed but with the Andreas it seems like there's some growing pains and there's some room for improvement. Let's put that rear wheel on hold and let's just put it in the saddle. There's some pretty subtle markings for height. Uh, this saddle is the same saddle that I'm pretty sure is made for the Aventon Matera. Hence all the modern looking lines. It's also blue, which looks fine on the Matera. But this is the Andreas, and it's red and dark gray and white. I'll be blunt, this saddle does not belong on that bike. This pains me, but I'm gonna do it anyway because I want you all to see what the stock experience is like. Oh, this hurts me inside, but I'm putting this seat post with this saddle on that Aventon Andreas, which is red and black and white and vintage inspired and this saddle is is none of those things What are you doing a Venton? The saddle One of these things is unlike the others The saddle not a huge deal. What really counts in a saddle is whether you find it comfortable or not. But one big reason that people ride fixed gears is because they're cool. They look great. And it seems to me that Aventon puts a lot of thought into how their bikes look. So the saddle on this bike seems a bit uncharacteristic to me. And if they had just gone with a plain black saddle, that would have fit the bike much better. Again, it's not a huge deal. Most people replace the stock saddles because a lot of them suck and most people don't find them very comfortable. But with this saddle on this bike, coming from a Venton who cares about looks, it almost feels like they're cutting corners. Ooh. All right, it wasn't as bad as I thought it'd be, but a tiny bit unfortunate that happened in the first place. And last for the Andreas, we have the pedals. And for me, pedals are a continual source of disappointment on complete bikes. Is it too much to ask for a set of pedals on a complete bike that are functional, durable, and comfortable? Survey says, maybe. Survey says yes, that is indeed. Too much to ask for. They're well go pedals, which are fine, but there's no foot retention, which I want, so I'm going to use my own set of pedals. That is an awesome looking bike. These are just my first impressions of the bike. They are far from conclusive, and of course, a lot of my opinions may change here when it's time for the full review. The Andreas is a vintage foray into the entry level steel fixed gear, and the way that they spec'd it and positioned it looks like they're trying to take on the Kilo TT Pro. So here's what I see that the Aventon Andreas does better, similar, and worse than the Kilo TT Pro. First off, with the specs, both of them are very similarly spec'd. Both of them are made out of Reynolds. 520 steel, which is just a fancier name for Cromoli. Both of them have seal bearing Novatec or Formula hubs, respectively, which are both laced to around 30 millimeter deep wheels, machine built. They both come with Tetro brakes, which are excellent stopping power and feel for the money. But something to note is that the Aventon Andreas only comes with a front brake, while the Kilo TT Pro comes with front and rear brakes. It seems like this should be flip flop though, since the Kilo TT Pro does not come with a free wheel, whereas the Aventon Andreas does. And if you're using that free wheel, you're probably going to want two brakes. And both the Andreas and the Kilo TT Pro come with Sugino RD2s, which are one of the best 130 BCD crank sets for fixed gears. The Kilo TT Pro costs $450, whereas the Aventon Andreas comes in at $500. But is that extra $50 worth it compared to the Kilo TT Pro? Although Kilo TTs sound great on paper, a problem that really plagues them is quality control issues. Sometimes you'll get a Kilo that can fit 32 C tires, whereas others can barely fit 25 C tires. Also, when I built up a stock Kilo TT for a friend, his bike came with a front brake that was like really tiny. It's like somebody took a shrink ray to the front brake and it just couldn't use it on the bike. It's not as clear cut as I was expecting though with Aventon. With the 2018 Aventon Matero, I was really impressed with her quality control and attention to detail. Some of that with the Andreas was a little bit lacking though, and I'm assuming this is because this is a new bike and new production standards for them. With that said though, there's nothing majorly wrong with the Aventon Andreas. All of my complaints are cosmetic. Out of the box, there's some scratches and imperfection in the paint, and both of the white bands on the frame are far from perfect. And then, there's that 
eyesore of a saddle. But to be fair, the Kalo TT saddle is also pretty hideous. And that's another thing to note, the Andreas isn't exactly black at the rear end. Depending on the light, it can either look like a sparkly dark navy or a sparkly dark gray, which I personally prefer over just black. The most important issue that I had with quality control with the Andreas is the damaged track end. And whether it is damaged during production or during shipping is almost irrelevant. Just the fact that it's damaged in the first place sucks and that we have to deal with it. Although the Andreas has a lot more quality control issues than I was expecting from a Venton, they're mostly cosmetic, whereas the ones on the Kilo TT that I've experienced affect the way the bike functions, mostly in how the Kilo TT varies in tire clearance. That's an important feature. A lot of people choose bikes according to tire clearance. But with the event in Andreas, it's just doesn't look as cool as I would like, which is totally whatever. So in my experience, the Andreas has better, but not perfect, quality control, which in my eyes does make it worth the extra $50. On top of that, it looks really cool. You can immediately tell what this bike is on the street just by taking a glance at its paint job. And the fact that it's a limited run, this is number 105 out of 200, that doesn't matter to me, but it might matter to you. It's a talking point, and Aventon knows that us fixed gear riders, we love to talk about our bikes. And if you can get a Kilo TT, that's whatever. There's tens of thousands of Kilo TTs out on the road. But if you have an Aventon Andreas, you can say, I have 105 out of 200. Which does beg the question, how accessible will the Aventon Andreas be compared to the Kilo TT Pro? You can order this a lot easier outside of the United States compared to the Kilo TT, but there's only 200 of them. So it will be interesting to see what Aventon's strategy is when it comes to the Andreas. Specs and how a bike actually feels and performs under real world conditions can be very different things. So please do take everything that I said with a grain of salt. I will be taking this thing out for a spin, so please do stay tuned for my first impressions of the Andreas's ride quality. Thanks to our channel sponsor, Wobby Cycles, I do get to ride the most fun that I've had on a bike as my daily bike. Out of all the bikes that I've ridden, the Wobbies are my favorite because they best suit my riding style. Wobbies are made of lightweight top shelf steel that gives the bike a nice springy and lively ride quality all while balancing the right amount of stiffness. Wobbies are also specced with no nonsense high quality components where nothing really needs to be replaced out of the box, unlike most other complete bikes. To put how nice Wobbies are into perspective, my 58 centimeter fully steel Wobby Special weighs in at a very slight 18 pounds. So if you're looking for your end-all be-all fixed gear for street riding, check out our channel sponsor Wabi Cycles, linked at the top of the description.